You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. This episode is brought to you by Palo Alto Networks, the leader in cybersecurity. As AI-driven attacks increase, organizations can't afford to have network security that's stuck in the past. Discover how Palo Alto Networks can help you predict what's coming and proactively secure against it with a zero-trust, AI-powered network security platform built to secure whatever, whenever, wherever. To learn more, visit paloaltonetworks.com slash network security platform. My name is Mark Logan, and I'm the CEO of One Identity. I would say uh, that I was always a competitive person. I, I played some college sports, and I wasn't very talented, but uh, I, I did end up matriculating to be our uh, our co-captain my senior year. So uh, there might have been a little bit of... Uh, leadership uh, that was in the DNA. Well, I was uh, not strong in all subjects, but, uh, but I had a bit of a, a penchant for, uh, for math and sciences. So when I headed to college, I dove into engineering. And then as I got through college, um, I saw the intersection point between business and uh, the technical side of things. So I ended up graduating with a double major in uh, engineering and in business management. So of course, I wasn't in, uh, in a management role right out of school, but over time, uh, I really leaned on some of the early on foundational skills. I was with Hewlett Packard for uh, six or seven years, and HP was pretty wedded to uh, hardware. And, uh, and I'm dating myself a bit. We're going back to the, uh, the late 80s. And that's when there was really a pivot to uh, enterprise software and uh, relational databases and so forth. So I made the pivot. Uh, tough decision to leave HP, but uh, the right decision. And uh, got into software. Uh, I worked for a couple of large software companies, Sybase being one of them, uh, uh, one of the true uh, leading uh, RDBMSs. And then myself and uh, four colleagues from Sybase co-founding a CRM business. So... I went from these companies that had tens of thousands of employees that were publicly traded to, uh, to just five of us. And it was both uh, any given day exhilarating and terrifying. We ended up with a, a very good uh, exit and uh, we were acquired by a large enterprise software firm. And I had the good fortune of that background. And, uh, and I also had the good fortune of having worked shoulder to shoulder with the other co-founders for a number of years. And you need a lot of trust. You need, to, you need to trust work ethic and integrity and character of those you go into business with. Over time, you know, you get recruited to various other startups. But if I were to offer any advice to anybody, if you're going to make that leap from a secure, larger public company to a less secure, smaller startup environment, boy, you really need to have that deep embedded trust with those that you go into business with. I ended up staying at J.D. Edwards. And well, what I think is also noteworthy is uh, some people find a company sale as a little bit scary. And for us at Ucentric, it was uh, it was a wonderful career opportunity for virtually every one of our couple hundred employees. So it's, uh, it's actually, you, you take advantage of those opportunities. Of course, uh, I could have elected to leave, but in this case, they, uh, they rolled out uh, the red carpet for us and uh, it was really a good uh, experience. Then, ultimately, uh, that company got acquired. I, I did ultimately decide to leave to take my first CEO opportunity about 20 years ago. And they were uh, the venture capital investors that were hiring. You know, again, if I were offering advice, don't be afraid to join small companies. This was the second time I had joined a, a fairly small company. But it was a great run. I spent years and years there as the CEO. After Rivermine, I was uh, fortunate enough to be uh, recruited for two other CEO roles and one role as a president of a public company called Attunity. And uh, more recently, I was the CEO of a cybersecurity company that is owned by Toma Bravo. Spent some time there um, and then the one identity opportunity came up and it really 
checked all the boxes. So the, the timing, the market, the industry, the products, everything uh, really came together for this opportunity. I've never been at a company, including Hewlett Packard, in which the engineering team said, we're good. We have all of the resources we need. And I've never been in a company where the product team said, we're good. We don't need to develop anything else. We've got all the functionality we need. So there's always more. It's always a need for more resources, more capabilities, et cetera. Uh, so one of the key jobs here is to prioritize and determine what you are and you aren't going to do. I think uh, there's a, a famous Steve Jobs quote uh, that says just that. It's not what uh, I say yes to, it's what I say no to, uh, because you can't say yes to every initiative, even though uh, I might get presented with a dozen initiatives any given week or month. They're all great, but you have to pick the ones that are going to have the highest return for our customers, for our enterprise, and for our team. I've, I've been successful being collaborative, but delegation is also really important. So I guess if you, you tie back together with the team um, and with the board, you set up a series of goals that you're going to march towards over the next year and the next multiple years. But, but there are financial goals uh, in any given year. And then you collaborate with the team on uh, almost you know, a daily, weekly, monthly basis on how we're going to attack the market, how are we going to delight our customers, how are we going to grow the, the business. And, uh, and then... If you have the right people in the right roles with the right expertise and, and the right tools, then my objective is let's back off and let people do their jobs. And I'm here for an escalation resource when there are those challenges or conflicts or priorities that have to be reconciled. But I've been, uh, I've found that the more you can delegate, provided you've got the right folks in place, the better. I think we all got presented with a little adversity. Uh, was it March uh, 11th or 12th when the pandemic hit? We took the world and turned it upside down. That's a time when you want to over-communicate. When, when things are tough, you need to really uh, batten down the hatches and, uh, and pull the team together. It might be uh, a little overused, but find a category within the industry that you're passionate about. There's some folks that are natural tinkerers and just have to get to the core solution set and the core answer. Perhaps development is the right place. Uh, there are those folks that are really passionate about uh, the future and, and creating a vision. Well, perhaps product management uh, is the right sector for you. Then there, there are people that are just really interested in culture and human interaction. Well, perhaps human resources is the right solo for you. So once you've found that passion, that doesn't mean that's it forever. So, uh, so, so I started on the, the go-to-market field marketing alliances side, uh, and then then uh, pivoted over to other aspects of uh, within business management. Um, I know folks that have said, "Nope, this is my domain. I'm going to be the greatest human resources executive of all time," and that's where they've gone. So, it's often overused, but find that initial area that you're passionate about. Because if you're not passionate about it, then you won't have that self-fulfillment and potential advancement. Be remembered for those that you helped. You helped to advance their careers. You might have helped them through a tough time. Um, whether it was within the enterprise I was leading or in other places. You know, I think uh, another piece of advice is networking and not just networking for self-advancement, uh, but networking to keep out there, uh, maintain a robust group of individuals that you can lean on for advice, perhaps mentorship, etc. And, and in order to pay it forward, I have to do the same. So I've made myself available and do so whenever possible to my extended relationship sets. So, you know, those those folks that uh, that I worked with 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, I attempt to still stay in touch with. But I hope to be remembered as somebody that's helped a lot of careers and a lot of folks get through some tough times and 
and land in a better place. Everybody, I want to take a few minutes here and talk about our sponsor, Splunk. You know, you need to keep operations humming around the clock, but potential disruptions are everywhere. Splunk helps you predict problems and find and fix issues fast so you can reduce risk and ditch downtime. The world's largest enterprises rely on Splunk's unified security and observability platform to become more efficient, resilient, and innovative. With Splunk, you can react quickly, evolve faster, and be ready for anything. Stay ahead of disruptions. Learn more at splunk.com slash resilience. 